Now, we, we've talked a little bit about, about your work, but what I want to hear, because all of you have, have worked for a long time in the industry, and there's either a lot of misperceptions about what you do, or just complete lack of understanding of what you do. I mean, I, you know, it's big people, people take photos with their cell phones, and so they think they know about cinematography, and they, 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 they dress themselves, so they kind of think they know about costume design. But, but I, I, mean, I want to hear from each of you what, what, what the biggest misperception about your job is. No one understands what I do. Well, <laughs> no one has an interest in sound effects or ambient sound or found sound or any of the things that I deal with on a daily basis, so I, I don't try to explain it. You just let it go? It, it, it's, it's, it's this sort of mysterious art form, in fact. Um, what we do is every bit as considered and creative as, as a musical score. It's, we, we think in terms of tempo and meter and timbre and voicing and pacing and dynamics. Just we don't use melodic instruments. We, we use atonal and enharmonic sounds. But it's every bit as, as, a, as a, a creative outpouring as, say, uh, writing a piece of music. Um, Hank, I mean, what, what, what do people think editors do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what the perception is. I, you know, I, I, I'm, this is just a quick aside. Looking at this grouping, I'm thinking, you know, we almost don't need directors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's not true. <laughs> and that was all right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, we do. Hey. <laughs> well, um, Patrick. Uh, well, I was going to say, I, I guess for visual effects, it's. Um, the computers do it. <laughs> That's the big thing. I, I mean, computers are the worst. You know, you all know uh, what it's like. Somebody has to actually physically do the work, and somebody has to create it. Um, and I think there's this perception that somehow visual effects is sort of coloring in something that's already given to you, that you're given this thing that already exists, and that you go in there and you just render it and make it look pretty. But it, there's really, you know, in the same way that all these guys up here, you know, create something. You you are asked to do something. You're asked to create an emotion and, and create a scene, like you know, in this movie, the Falcon flying through the desert. And you know, there's nothing in there that's real from the moment the Falcon takes off to the to the end of that scene. But you have to still can tell that story and convey that emotion in the same way. And, and somebody has to make those decisions. And I think there's a large group of people involved in that that um, you know you never hear about because. Uh, Everybody is doing their job well, and, and that's the idea. Again, it's invisible, you know. Yeah. And, and John, do, do, do people understand what you do? No, probably not, because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, every film is different. You, uh, you know, I, I do approach every film as a separate um, uh, exercise. I, I try never to uh, take a, uh, take a uh, style of lighting or camera work from one film to the other, I like to have a break and, and try and regard every film as a brand new film. And in fact, one that I've never, uh, you know, I've never worked on, I've, I, I don't know anything about it. And I, I let that become my searching for um, uh, experience and searching for then the identity of the next film. Um, so sometimes it's a bit of a mystery as you go in and sometimes I'm very lost at the beginning, but it starts to, to evolve with all of the creation of uh, the various crews coming together in pre-production, and suddenly you can see the whole thing uh, becoming a final film. And it's, that's to me, is the exciting, very exciting part of it. Yeah. Well, Diane? Sorry, what was the question? I mean, do, 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 when you write a song for a film, do, do people think, okay, I, I, I know how that works, I get it? I mean, I don't know. Do you guys know? It's writing a song. You know, it's just, I, mean, I write songs for people, I write songs for movies, and um, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. Huh? Um, okay. uh, I, I don't know if there's a big mystery to it, to what I do. I just, yeah. you know, yeah. write a song. And, yeah. And Arthur? Hopefully they, people like it. Yeah. I think essentially we, we create worlds. Um, every film is a prototype. It's a different world. 
And I mean, just to clear up the whole most asked question about what's the difference between a production designer and an art director? There is none. It's just somebody's got to be in charge. And so lately, and quite recently, I mean, I'm proud to be an art director. I consider myself an art director because it's much more of a hands-on kind of job description. You know, you get your hands dirty, you get involved, you're involved with construction of things, a building of worlds, whereas production designers, it's an executive job. You deal, you interface with studio executives. <laughs> Any studio executives here tonight? <laughs> I sincerely hope not, because I'm looking for work. And, uh, <laughs> but, you know, we, in the art department, we, we conceive, um, you know, whatever appropriate environment is uh, the setting for, you know, the story that's being told. And I love it, because I try to do, um, you know, a different one every time. No sequels for this boy. Yeah. And, and it's um, it's fun, and you get paid. Yeah, <laughs> Carter. Um, well, I think you know most people can probably imagine what writing music is. So I think the the, um, the technical aspect of what I do isn't hard to grasp. It hasn't changed that much in hundreds of years. But I think the main misperception is I think we alluded to it when we were speaking is well, I think a lot of people think well I watch the movie and then I I write something that goes along with the movie in some way. Uh, but similar to what Mark was saying, uh, you know, about using whale sounds on a truck, in fact, the job is often the opposite of that. I watch the movie and I think, what's missing? What is the thing that I can bring the movie that's not already there that you wouldn't have just guessed anyway by watching it? Uh, so I think that's usually the main misperception I, I encounter. Yeah. And Jacqueline? I, I think people a real perception of costume, <laughs> of costume <laughs> design, because there have been so many documentaries on Edith Head working with Alfred mm. Hitchcock, and they imagine the costume designer sitting, you know, drawing, doing sketches, and talking to the director and the actors. There's always pictures of costume designers collaborating with the actors, but for the most part, it's, a, well, for me, a very character-driven um, process. and. Uh, I remember working once with Brad Pitt, and he called me a, a method costume designer. <laughs> he said I went so f into the character that, um, you know, I, I kind of forget about doing the drawings and stuff. And, and now I've found that directors don't even want to look at drawings. You know, they want to look at, you know, pictures of real stuff. And so I think it, it's changed over the years. It's not like the the, the classic... Maybe that's more with the theater now, the, mm. the way people have seen drawings in vogue and stuff of costume designers. It's a, it's a different process well, now, well, I think. Well, speaking of changes, because Patrick, I mean, <clears throat> I'm guessing by the time you finished visual effects of Star Wars, the technology had changed from when you started with it. Yeah, things changed pretty rapidly, absolutely. And, you know, there's this... Um, there's this uh, thing that you're fighting all the time where you're trying to, obviously you're trying to finish your project and you're trying to get done, but you, you have, you know, every one of us at ILM has this thing where we just, you know, we always want to do the new thing and we always want to try something, but it could all go horribly wrong. So you have to, you know, kind of, you kind of have to have backup plans, but you do, you do try things and you do experiment with, with um, different techniques and, um, you know, you you want to feel like you took a step forward. It, it's kind of disappointing to everyone if you feel like you did something and you didn't try anything new, it really wouldn't feel like you were doing your job, you know? So I, I think it's, it is part of the job. But, but no, Diane and Cora, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but I'm thinking, but, but writing music is fundamentally the same now as when you started, that, that all the digital changes. No, no, I mean, what I do is what I've always done. I just yeah. hope I do it better. Yeah. Yeah, but has but as, as, as digital technology changed your work methods? Well, um, it's true. The tools change all the time. And in fact, if I had to write with pencil on paper, I could never do this job. I'm not, I don't have that facility, and I would not be fast enough. So if it weren't that these digital tools were around when I started, I, I wouldn't be doing this, honestly. So uh, 
you know, it, it has made a you know, substantial difference in, you know, what I do, yeah. I still use a Walkman and a cassette to write. <laughs> I do. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> I just always have. My studio has other things in it, though. <laughs> Thank God. Um, Okay, well, I mean, seriously, congratulations to all of you, and, and, and thank you for coming. And we're going to present the awards now. Um,